Wow. The frame of your shape is real. Enjoy the vibration of you, da, how I'm done. See if you can find any good filters for your water. Free Phineas. Sometimes you just gotta wait for it. Those answers you're seeking, those questions you got. Don't be so in a hurry. Too many minds. Wow. Sometimes you just gotta wait for those answers you're seeking, the right questions. Not about all the questions you have in your head, it's about the right questions in your heart. Free Phoenix. Wow. Imagine yourself there, and so you'll be. Imagine your freedom, and you'll have it. The world is yours again. The vibration is yours again. Wow. Free Phoenix. We're just having the conversations with the water. And how Judah, Judah, Utah, 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 Judah. It's funny when they play the uh, two-word, two-letter switcheroo. Horace Butler told you that. The games they play with their consonants. We're going to read a story and it's going to blow your mind. Because it blew my mind, man. Much a hop to Chef Candy who blows my mind. She's been blowing my mind for 11 years. You know, we just enjoyed our, you know what I'm saying, 
our eighth year wedding anniversary, but you know how it is, man. We've been married for 11 years, man. <laughs> and oh boy, man, Chef Candy got me cooking. Uh, Chef Candy got me cooking. I'm talking electric trinity. I let go. We just in the library surfing the web. Oh, yeah, I gotta add, uh, I gotta add Preston John 30 to this mix. But you got 1 through 29 right here. I'll add number 30 after this drop. Get the drop, get the drop, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be putting most of the drop in this series. It's, it's gonna be, Preston John is so deep when you get to it. We're just talking priest, your priesthood, a function. Preston John is a function. They call it the Holy Grail. What function are you in? Conjunction, junction. Or what's your function? Drop Nation. Get the drop. I know, I still got a lot of drop to add in here. Be patient with me, man. We've been live on the radio for five hours a day. Really, from 10 p.m. to 2 or 3 a.m., you know, West Coast time. So that's taking a lot of the time that I would normally have to update the library, but I still get to wow. it. Oh, wow, man. I want to get this drop. I really want to get this black Jacobin drop, man. This is a cold drop. I mean, you know, you see what's in here. You see it. You see it. You see what's in here, man. I say you see what's in here, man. Man. We got some drop up in here, man. Wow. Wow has unsealed the books for our collective Mashiach. Our collective Mashiach. You work together, you are your Mashiach. You are in the function of Priest King Preston John. Oh, they've been looking for President John for so long. Man, they've been looking for Preston John. This we gotta do a whole series on this joint, but in the future, man, you know, after Preston John 50, man, my series is gonna be coming right out of 432thedrop.com. So, you know, subscribe or register to the site, you know what I mean? Make sure you're surfing the wave. Don't get left on. I ain't gonna be on YouTube, man, you know, so. We're giving Google 20 more Preston John series and anything in between that. <laughs> 20 more Preston John uh, parts. Preston John 50, we out. And I'll be going hard. I'll be going hard for the Priest King, so let's go. Just because you want it. Priest King know when you want it. Your dragons know when you want them. It's all in order. It's all a dance we play. Remember, we're just talking dragon bodies. That's what I love about the Drop Library, man. You could just surf the wave by scrolling and say, you know what, let me dig on this, man. For free, we ain't got to go nowhere and register, you know, to some some paid applications to try to find something. We already got the drop. You already dropped the drop on me. This Peru is the land of our beginning. Someone dropped the drop on IGs, you know, showing that basically Peru was... All of South America, if you want to look at it that way, at one time. This Peru is the land of our beginnings. Where we went from the old red land, even before it sank. Because this land is as old as the dragon land of the fire god. What they're calling Atlantis fire god. Da -da 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 -da. Fire god. Fire god. It must got something to do with fire. Remember, these are translations into this English tongue. You get the drop. You got to get the drop. You find it and get the drop. And don't let it go. Because I'm talking about Mississippi. These words were spoken by shooting star chief of the Sioux tribe. During a visit to Peru, the chiefs believed that he had returned to an old stomping ground of his ancestors was confirmed by the special handshake a group of native Peruvian shamans greeted him with. It was the traditional handshake exchanged by his forefathers, the Atlantean serpent. So whoever this particular chief is could easily be hijacked. 
I don't know the guy. I can't confirm or deny him. I can't confirm or deny their handshake. And I don't know what side they are on in this Atlantis, you know what I'm saying, frequency war. But I know we're talking that shooting stars ancestors were the turtles, a branch of who they're calling fire worshiping serpents, right? Atlantis. What else would they call you? You breathe fire, Naga. What else would they call you? You got the sun, they say you're sun worshiping. You breathe fire, they say you're fire worshiping. You must worship it because you're kicking their ass with it. You got the elements on your side. Fire, water, ether, land, earth, right? Eretz, Eretz. You have it all on your side when you're talking about Adam, the image. If you're the image of the creator, you're the sequence of the creator. You are the energy of that which created you. Your Hawa, your secure breath, your Ruah. You're in the frequency, so you are. You just have to believe it. When you deal with fire, water, air, you know, land, there's nothing else that can describe it outside of, you know, the creator than dragons. Okay? Fire, water, air, and land. So this has a lot to do with you. It has a lot to do with your creator. It stands for something, man. Deeper than you think. Deeper than you can think. I'm just talking dragon bodies, man. Let's take it to the top before we get into this drop. This is just the intro. A hob to the family, man. Indigenous uh, Kiwata. On IG, dropping that drop at all times, man. What's up, my bro? What's up, my naga? I see you, man. I see you, bro. All the Instagram fam, I mean, Instagram's lighting up, man. I mean, I used to not really drop, like, hella drop on there because it just seemed like so much plastic shit. But honestly, man, like, there's a lot of, a lot of Nagas, <laughs> a lot of Nagas coming awake on IG. And fine, man, use this shit for whatever you need to use it for. Use IG and Twitter, all this bullshit for what you need it for. But let it ignite the realness in you because the shit got to get real. And you have to, you know what I'm saying, choose up, suit up. Wake up, tribe up, vibe up, Let's go. The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom is this drop by Mark Amaru. Sounds like Pac, huh? Ping, ping hat. All right, man. Yeah, remember this, I just wanna get the top. I just wanna get how it starts so I can get into where we going. I just want chapter one, man. Oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. We're talking about the serpents of wisdom or the dragons of wisdom. Remember, you know, we got to get that framer and shaper drop again so we know how it's being broken down in the Papuva, which is known as one of their most sacred texts that, of course, we got to dodge the hijack in these translations of this stuff, man. We got to get deeper. Because they're taking symbols and trying to tell you what it is in English. Man, you're losing a lot of drop when they do that. A lot of diluting, man. The Serpents of Wisdom in their worldwide organization. Chapter 1, The Serpents of Wisdom. Let's see if we can find something that might resonate, my knocker. Alright, I know you got your scriptures, right? You got your scriptures. The man, look, man, it's in the... Go to Barnes and Nobles and buy the scriptures, man. It's right there. Look, it's in Barnes and Nobles. Look, KJV. Look, look, it's right there. <laughs> you think that's all you got to go is to Barnes and Nobles to get the drop? You think all the drop is in Barnes and freaking Noble in the KJV? You think they'll make it that easy, man? Maybe you got to see deeper. Maybe you got to see clearly. You've been invaded, fool. Wakey, wakey, you've been invaded. You're acting like a fool. Hanging on to English and its translations from Hijack 101. You're in Hijack City. That's why it's so easy to get. Ah, but no one's dropping this. No one's digging on this around you, right? The wave we've been surfing, not just dragons, not just this, but shit. I honestly don't know any drop that's more important, honestly, than this dragon drop. 
because this drag and drop is connecting directly to your guardian angels who the scriptures call seraphim then you are awake then you crave your wall of protection your wall then you're back in your codes and we're gonna get into this code man because whatever you know this is five codes of Cabo or something like that we're gonna get into these five codes that they got these dragon codes and see how it relates we're wow. just trying to see how it relates how why surf the wave dodge the hijack at all times put your rain boots on much a hop to the tribe shalom shabbat tabawa wah wah let go Yeah, I told y'all a long time ago about me, man. Some people call me Marcus. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Some people call me... Some people call me Drop. But those that love me call me El Yaquim. El Hawakum. That who the most side takes from low. And raises with the vibration. We're talking about the raising of the vibration. And we're talking about choosing up, getting with it, or getting left on. If you think this is play play, well, what would you have it? How would the Most High reveal it to you? Would it be one drop at a time? Maybe he'll put it in a flow so you can belly flop. Or maybe you'll just get knocked upside the head with it. What is the water to you? Is it chaos? Or is it a beautiful stream? Is your water chaos or is it a beautiful flow? When we talking about getting the drop, look at all this drop. Look at all these PDFs, man. All praise of Wahoo Wah. We got it right here for free for our community, man. All praise of Wahoo Wah. This, this, this is bigger than anything I could vision ever. I'm talking pure water. I'm talking Hawaii Da. I'm talking Kaleloos. I'm talking the Four Corners, man. Let go. So when we talk this drop, when we get to it, we're gonna get it, you know, we're gonna dig all the way down. All right, the serpents of wisdom or the dragons of wisdom. Many times during the course of history, certain individuals have come forward claiming to have realized the purpose and goal of existence. Through arduous spiritual disciplines, these masters have successfully united the male and female principles within themselves. This is beautiful. I'm just surfing the wave with you. Where's the pop of uh? Let's find the pop of uh together. Let's dig on. I probably passed it already. Our next library, we're going to have like one of those direct searches, you know what I'm saying? So you can just put it in and go right to it. But this is all we got right now. It's all I got. It's all I got. It's all I got to offer. All right, all praise of God. Let's go. Let's make it enough, man. Let's do it together. Let's do this together. And this is the Papa Va, all right? Sacred Book of the Quiche Maya, translated by Alan Christensen. So already I know it's going to be some. Christ hijack. Dodge the hijack. Let's go. Yeah, right, man. So, this is pretty dope. I got to get more into this because it's going to break down so much about the new to language. I think some Algonquin in here. Digging on that Yuki Tan. The first, like, 40, 50 pages are just literally, trans you know, showing them, showing you how meticulous they went into the translations. Of the cliche. So what you see before you is the cliche. It's four cornerings. This is the cliche translation. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? How y'all reeling out there, man? I know how you feeling, man, but how you reeling? See, how you feeling is one thing. You might be feeling up, you might be feeling down, you might be feeling left, you might be feeling right. But how you reeling? Huh? C, Q, similar to K. Alright, man. So you're going you're gonna to see some connection with this paleo. For sure, for sure. 
Let's just get this male and female. What do we just get here? These masters have successfully united the male and female principles within themselves. Let's go back to the Papuva and see if we can find it substantiated within the Quiche writings before the invasion. Before the invasion. This is the beginning of the ancient traditions of this place called Quiche. Here we shall write, we shall begin to tell the ancient stories of the beginning, the origin of all that was done in the citadel of Quiche, among the people of the Quiche nation. Quiche means root. Root. How dare you try to graft your branches into the tree? Ain't that what uh, old Flavia says in Paul? <laughs> <laughs> in Romans 11, 11, it's talking about, in the New Test, it's talking about grafting into the tree. Hey Amen, very clever. But I'm just talking about the root. I mean, don't y'all want to get to the root of it all? Aha, uh -huh, to the tribe. Y'all gotta be feeling me. I'm just talking about the root Foundation Foundation Legend Foundation Concrete How not, not abstract Let's get it man We got some great drop today Love to Chef Candy Drop this on me Chef Candy dropped this on me Cause she been getting tuned up By the sisters man The sisters got their own copper thread They be vibing They got it popping They be in the chat room Every single radio show Every single night We did 10 radio shows in a row Again, five nights a week, 10 to 3. I'm going to work on actually bumping it up an hour. Just give me a couple weeks, you know what I'm saying? Then I'll try to get it to the 9 o'clock slot. So at least if you're on the East Coast, you'll get it at midnight. You know what I mean? But that's the earliest I can do. That's the best I can do. Got four babies. That's the best I can do. I ain't like one of them, you know, pops that say they, they pop. Like, I'm a pops, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I put my babies to bed, you know what I mean? You know, we do a whole situation, man, every night, man. So I do that every night easily because it, it's 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 something I'm in love with. And once you kind of see yourself and, you know, vibrate with your creator, you know what I'm saying, raising your children and keeping them close is a necessity for us. Hijack free. So big up all the pops out there, man, that's, that's holding it down. Big up Hawa Stu that just had his... You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Ya pa, ya pa, ha da sa. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the bro, man. Real talk. Let's go. You know, I'm, I'm even prouder, man, of uh, his wonderful queen, Camellia. You know, I'm even more proud of her, man, because she held it down, had a natural birth. You know what I mean? Held it down, man. So, much a hop to the family, the Stewart family. Click below. Click the link below. Keep supporting the Stewart family. Keep supporting the Stewart family. Keep supporting the Stewart family. They opened the door. I'm just talking about the root of Drop Nation. Quiche. Let go. We shall begin to tell the ancient stories of the beginning, the origin of all that was done in the Citadel, it has a little thing by it. Let's go see what they're talking about. What's Citadel? What, what, what? Based on Tinamit Anahua, derived word meaning fortified town, fortification wall. Let's read it again. The origin of all that was done in the fortification town, the fortified city. What does that sound like? All right, let's dig on it. Among the people of the root nation. Quiche means root. The root nation. Hmm. Who's the root nation? Let's go. Wow. Here we shall gather the manifestation, the declaration, the account of the sowing and the dawning by the framer and the shaper. She who has born children... And he who has begotten sons, as they are called, along with Hanapu, possum. Wow. 
Awa. And Hanu Po Coyote. Which is very interesting, right? Because we've been digging on this coyote fox shot. <laughs> we've, we've been dogging the coyote. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, look, man. I don't know. I don't know about this translation. Coyote. Oh, I got a 16 by it. Let's see what it said. Let's see what it said. I don't know about this coyote business. <laughs> I don't know about it. An animal also associated with the night. Oh, wait a minute. Ah. So it's not a coyote. It's a U U D. U D. Can I get this bigger, man? Can I get it bigger? Let's get it bigger, man. Here we go. U D. Is that how you say it? Is that how y'all would say it? All right. So it says, that is the coyote, Canis latrans, an animal also associated with the night. All right. I'm just saying, I, I don't just give in to the coyote business because they translated coyote. Let's go. Great white Bacari and Coati, Sovereign and Kitzel Serpent. Let's go down to the serpent. Kikumats. Kikukumats. Kukumats. Something like that. May be translated as Kitzel Serpent or less accurately as Feathered Serpent. So, less accurately Feathered Serpent, more accurately Kitzel Serpent. Refers to the Kitzel Bird. For Romacrus Macino, Macino, one of the most beautiful birds in the world. Do y'all know about the Foromacrus? Y'all know about the Foromacrus? So yeah, so the Kitsu has to do with the Foromacrus. All right, that's something else to dig on. One of the most beautiful birds in the world. World. It inhabits the cloud forest, the cloud forest of the southern Mesopotam Mesoamerica. The cloud forest. I never heard really that. You know what I mean? Have y'all heard something called the cloud forest? I mean, we got some drop to get to. I didn't even mean to get deep like this over here. We just in the intro. This is still the intro, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to put it in cloud forest. I'm just surfing the wave, man. Just had a beautiful day sharing it with y'all. Let's go, cool, man. Ah, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Also called waterfalls. Ooh, look at some images. I want to see some pictures. I want to see some pics. Cloudy ass forest, huh? Is that what we say? That cloud force. Can y'all dig that? Did y'all know there were cloud force? Because it's so high in the sky. Okay. That's great. Wow, I need to put some of these up in our, uh, you know, our slideshows, man. Some beautiful pictures. But yeah, cloud forest. Wow, okay. Something new for me. Let's dig it. So this Kitzel bird inhabits the cloud forest. It's like paradise, huh? Huh? I like paradise, huh? You might need to dig on these cloud forests, man. Can y'all imagine the healthy plants? Up inside this cloud forest, man. Let's just dig on this cloud forest for a minute. Cause I just don't know how long you're gonna go before you see another cloud forest like this. Why you in your concrete jungles, your concrete cities, trying to be cool? You in your concrete jungle? Alright, man. You just comfortable, huh? You like being sprayed with poison every day. Let's go. Both male and female have brilliantly colored iridescent blue green feathers on their wings. Interesting. Interesting. Kitzel. So when you hear Kitzel, we're talking this most beautiful bird that inhabits the cloud forest. Now we know what Kitzel is. 
beautiful bird that inhabits the cloud forest. A Lego serpent. Oh well, you know we got that etymology. We know we're talking dragon. We know we're talking dragon. Heart of lake, heart of sea. So your mama is the heart of lake. Your father is the heart of sea. Hmm, Leviathan. Interesting, man. Creator of the green earth. Creator of the blue sky. Your mama, mother earth. Your father, Rakwa. I beat it out. I beat out the expanse of the sky. I pulled it like a tent. I pulled it. I I stretched it. Stretched the heaven. Shamaim, Shamaim. Like a tent. Rakwa, right? So I beat it out with my right hand. Formed the expanse of the sky. Showing you it's a solid structure. There's something being built with his right hand. No, don't take it literally. Okay, so you'd rather be spitting on a ball. You can you can fathom that. That makes perfect sense. Trillions of tons of water crushed into a ball with some theory, not a law, named gravity. That you have to believe in. That's the science god. That's the god of science. It's called gravity. Because it's a theory, not a law. You have to believe in it for it to be true. For your ball to exist. Creator of the green earth and creator of the blue sky. Rakwa, I formed the expanse of the sky. See how it all connects. Now this predates your script that you get from Barnes and Noble. So yeah, we are the people of the book. Which one? Where did they get the book? They just made it up and brought it to you? They had to drop and they brought it to you? In English? The most bastard fork tongue ever in existence? And we hang on to every single word that somebody typed out? Nigga, is you sleep? Or are you trying to wake up? Are you waking up? You have to reverse, reverse, reverse to break the spell. Search it out with your heart. Weigh all things. You will know it's encoded within you. These are the titles for the divine couple. Let's get it bigger. These are the titles for the divine couple. Ik kik moon kik moon kane kik pik kok. Yemenes translated their cliche names Alam and Kajolom as mother and father. A more accurate translation for Alam, however, is she who has born children. From the perfect aspect of the root verb all. So it is Islam, you have the Allah. Wow, wow, that's how we know that they're talking about a feminine and they're really going to their Isis, their crescent moon, they're going to their queen mother. The same queen mother in Revelations 12 that's giving birth to Jupiter, man. They're giving you Revelations 12. It didn't come from you. All to bear children. The name of the male god, power. When I see God, I know they're talking dog, so I say power. Wow. wow. The name of the male power, Kajolom, specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring. Specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring. You're the seed of your father. You're in the vibration, the wa, the security of your father. The scepter will never leave David, Dawu, who is pressed to John, the seed of his father, wa, security. Now listen, Frey Bartolome, Frey Bartolome, look him up, Frey Bartolome de las Casas, 
wrote in the 16th century that the people of Guatemala worshipped as their principal powers the great father and the great mother that were in heaven, apparently referring to this divine couple. So in Christianity, they slice it in half and you just got, in your mind, in your in inception, they've inceptioned you and brainwashed you. And now you only see a, a male deity walking back and forth, you know, ah, I'm just a man by myself. What am I going to do? Now you see the Most High is never by himself with, with wisdom, with the Torah, with Torah. Your, your, your father created the world with Torah, with your framer, with your mama, the father and the mother, the great father and the great mother. Always rocking together. Yes, they are one. So we're not talking about a duality at all. Two things, you know, we're talking about a unity. A divine unity. One power. You have one God. One power. One God, right? One power. It's a unity. That's the depth of it. It's your mama and your daddy. When you wake up, you get that power in your house or in your body, in your temple, in your heart. That power goes in your house. It affects your family. This is Paleo Picto Hebrew, man. This ain't new and it ain't play play. It's the design. You've been following a design and it's already encoded in these codings. This is the code to your design. The power hits you. You got that drop. That power hits you. It went into your family, your body, your temple. You started walking. We started walking together. We walked through a door with Hawa, Stu, and Camellia. We walked through a door with our sister Vanessa Perkins. Move, hang, entrance. You walk through a entrance. And the first, the first energy to greet you is, hey, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ah. Look, reveal your breath. Your breath, you got breath. You got life. You got ruach when you enter the door. Your mama. When you inhale, that's the feminine. You inhale. When I say take a breath, Naga, what are you going to do? The first thing you're going to do when you take a breath is inhale. The inhale is the ha. Is the ha. Instead of saying ha with your exhale, try saying ha with a deep breath. That's the ha. The ha. If you get scared, you go ha. Right? You inhale. So the inhale is your mama. It's the breath you take. When you exhale, all that power is the wah. Security, the hook of the tent. I stretched out the heavens like a tent. The hook of the tent, the secure hook going into Mother Earth. The framer going into Mother Earth. The framer is your wah. Ladies first. Respect our sisters. Ladies first. Respect our mama. Let her through the door. Let her greet her children once they get the power in the house and they start to walk. They go through the dial. They go through the door and they get there. <gasps> they reveal. It's a revelation. It's a breath. Then they say, wow, I'm secure. Then you have a cutoff day, a Zion, a Zion, a Zion is Zion. Zion is Zion, a cut off mountain, a cut off mountain, a cut off tree is your seventh letter, Zion, Zion. Zion is pronounced Zion, and it's your food, your cut, your cut off, your nourish, your nourishment. It's also described as a weapon, it's your weapon when you cut it off. After you get your framer and your shaper, your mother and your father. 
Cloud Forest, man. I can't make this shit up. She who has born children. Kajalam specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring. You know them hijacked books, men are from Mars. I mean, women are from Mars. How's it going? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, some shit. Some hijack shit. So men are from Mars. Men are from Kajulam. Right? Women are from Venus. Right? That's their hijack. That's their celestial mother and father. Right? Mars and Venus. Zeus. Let's go. So above the barrier, above the firmament, above the expanse of the sky, creator of the green earth and creator of the blue sky, above the firmament, above the separation is the throne. That's where you're from, my naga. That's where your dragons are from, my naga. Ah, dragons are in captivity. The naga's in captivity. Free Phoenix. I'm talking the framer and shaper. Framer refers to one who makes something by putting things together. What does a woman do around the house? She puts it all together. Building from stone or adobe. A meal, a meal, a meal from various ingredients. Much of Hobby Chef Candy for holding me down for 11 years, man. A meal from various ingredients or a woven cloth from in individual threads. That's your mama. That's your ha. <gasps> That's your breath. She's putting it together for you so you can do what? Wah! Have security. Let go. The shaper, your father, refers to one who makes something by modeling pottery from clay or a sculpture from carved stone, thus giving shape. I formed you. I molded you. You're in my vibration. You're my seed. A father passes his seed. See, that's the technology that they push in their science. Oh, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, men just have sex and you know what I'm saying women carry the uh the life the life well yes that's true wow. but why wow, we know that the egg is dormant until the life hits it the life is already being carried in the shaper the male Kajulong begotten male seed the seed is life seed is life you look up Hawashu Wa we're talking about the sprouting seed son of noon noon Sprouting seed, son of noon, Joshua, son of noon, noon, seed, continuance, air, son, a father passes his seed, plants it in the earth, that seed is already alive, them boys been carrying that seed for a long time, most of the time wasting seed, right? So that life is being carried by the male the whole time. Then enters that egg that's dormant, and then it's there, there's a there's a burst, there's a spark, right? People actually have seen a spark when they, you know, zoom in on this stuff. A spark of life. Now the life is in the egg. Now the motherhood begins, but the fatherhood's been there. He's been the continuance. He's been carrying the seed the whole time. So don't just waste your seed. It's a continuance. It's your royalty. It's your kingdom. My bros. Let's go. I'm just talking cloud forest, man. Cloud forest. Get that drop. So the shaper thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and shaper. Listen up, my naga. We're about to get some amazing uh, dragon drop. <laughs> Let's go. The Framer and Shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. I'll say it again. This is coming right from the cliche, right from the root, right from the cliche, right from the root. Bito, Shaper. Tsitsuko, Framer. 
สักโก้ปิดโต้ The framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. So you, my naga, were created by the framer and shaper. Their names implied that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed, rather than conjuring something out of nothing. Matter that already existed, rather than conjuring something out of nothing. So, with that matter that already exists, your mama is doing what? Putting things together. Building from stone or adobe, a meal from ingredients. Your shape or your father is doing what? Molding those things. Once she's put it together, he's molding. And they, they, they must be already in the vibration for her to even start putting it together. The wa. Their names imply that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter. What's matter? What's the matter? energy that already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing this pair of power was so important that listen my not this is very important you got this but you got to get it like it's the first time this pair of powers your mother and your father your framer and your shaper it's gold the adult this pair of powers was so important That soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Viso, Domenico de Viso, look up Father Domenico de Viso if you want to drop. He used their cliche names, their root names, to refer to the power of the Old Testament. Body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. So this Spaniard, this Spanish friar, you know, whatever you want to call him, missionary. Wow. Domenico de Vicio. This pair of powers. The, the framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers. So when you look for it, you're like, what's the most frequently, frequently mentioned They say God, other this, and like, oh, well, there's, there's this God, there's that God. What's the most frequently mentioned pair of powers or power? Oh, the frame and the shape. They're the most frequently mentioned powers of the Naga. So in Christianity, they split it apart and they gave you a fake father. In Islam, they split it apart. They give you a fake mother and you're worshiping the celestial underneath the barrier in the underworld. You're worshiping death the whole time. You don't know no better. You thought heaven was heaven. You thought that the, that when you read heaven that you were referring to heaven as you know it. And I'm sorry, but heaven is the celestial and there's higher heavens. Yes, but the heaven they're referring to, especially in the New Testament, every time you're reading heaven, they're talking celestial talk. They're talking hijack 101. You're reading an English, man. It's their game, not yours. Their game. You're losing. You're going to lose every time when you play their game. It's rigged. Loaded dice. The framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. A reading from the Papu Vuh, Kishé. Their names implied that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already exists. The energy that, that is already a part of them. Rather than conjuring something out of thin air, this pair of powers was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Viso used their root names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. So there is a different power in the Old Testament and a different power in the New. That's why we don't fuck with it. We just get the baby. We're not making this shit up. Talk to Domenico de Viso. Talk to Arius Piso and the Flaviuses. They love making shit up out of thin air and having councils about it. 
but they're really getting your foundational legends from the old test so called and conjuring up witchcraft and their sorcery and stories and their English and their whatever whatever they're speaking whatever version this version that version that version oh this version is this that version is this oh this version is, is coming from yada 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 Aramaic I don't care man Aramaic ain't you I'm talking root I'm talking cliche you don't see Aramaic all over America we're talking cliche Algonquin you see picto paleo let's go get out the mind of a hijack framer shaper this power was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest Domenico de Vicio used their cliche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. He said, wow, that's the power. The cliche name, so he used Sacco and Bito as the name of the creator and what they're calling the Old Testament, so it's the real creator. Sacco and Bito. So when we break it down a while into a secure breath, we're speaking a pure water frequency. And yeah, we, you know, we're talking about other names that are very significant. It's not, oh, this name is this. It's not a, oh, this title is this. It's not like their name is, is Framer and Shaper or Secure Breath. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're using our energy to crystallize. You know what I'm saying? To crystallize when we talk about the, our creator, we're speaking a crystallizing frequency. So, Hawa is a beautiful crystallizing frequency. You're speaking the Ha, you're speaking the Wa, the six, the fifth and sixth letters of the Picto. You're talking about your secure breath. And sure, and another variation of Sako, referring to one putting things together. Bito, referring to one molding, 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 giving shape. Alright, so you know what I'm saying, we keep em emptying our cup, and you know, we, we recognize when we're talking about the root, we recognize that we're talking about an essence that's being put on something that you can't really describe and you can't really name. You can just do your best to have a crystallized pure water frequency by referring to something that you can't truly give a title for. Even this can't truly describe what we're talking about we're just giving our best to give an interpretation because what it really is is within you what it it can't be put into any translation what it is is within you the framer and the shape let's go These masters had successfully united the male and female principles within themselves. The framer and the shaper. Raised the inner transformative fire dragon from its seat at the base of the spine. Kundalini and awakened the consciousness of love within the heart. Right? They're trying to put into English something that you feel inside you you know bear with them for these rare individuals the evolutionary cycle of spiritual transformation has been completed such enlightened men and women have reached the goal of all spiritual paths and have become androgynous serpents of wisdom or dragons of wisdom when i see serpent i say dragon because i know there's a difference when we deal with the alchemical serpent and alchemical dragon let's go while existing within male and female gender specific forms, they are both male and female, spirit and matter fully united in one body. One body. One body. Again, we're talking unity, not duality. We got one body. Male and female, spirit and matter united, fully united in one body. The I am, ain't that, 
The translation, I am, I exist, Hawa, the Hawa of the individual self has fully united with the unlimited spiritual self or Hawa, you say God, Hawa, and the, affir the affirmation of I am that. I am everything. I and my father are one. Does it sound familiar? Before they got their new test, before they got their new test, remember, their names imply that the creation of all giving frame and shape to matter that already exists within them already, then conjuring something out of nothing, this pair of powers was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Managa, you've been invaded. You were already here. You were already here. They invaded you. Now you talk their tongue. Get out of the mind of a hijack. Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche root names to refer to the so-called God. We're talking the Hawa of the Old Testament. There's a different power to it. That's why they called it Old and New, man. Let's go. The I am of the individual self has fully united with the unlimited spiritual self or a wow. In the affirmation of I am that, I am everything, I and my father are one, continually resounds within their hearts, their heart bones, man. In symbolic terms, the ego, the spirit, male principle has fully united with the snake a matter ego feminine principle and they have become serpents of wisdom a fully conscious spirit inhabits a physical form the serpents of wisdom or dragons of wisdom wield unlimited dragon wisdom and powers including the ability to materialize any physical object at will They dwell within immutable physical bodies which can survive for hundreds of years. Doesn't that sound like script? Didn't your ancestors live for hundreds of years? Although they experience the world primarily out of an immortal, excuse me, immortal fourth dimensional dragon body. An etheric shield which surrounds and interpenetrates the physical body. They dwell within immutable physical bodies which can survive for hundreds of years, Naga. You, we're, we're learning about you, okay? Yeah, you don't have to believe it. That's the only thing holding you back is your mind, not your heart, your mind. Ego, they call it. Although they experience the world primarily out of an immortal, that means they don't die. Press the John. Fourth dimensional dragon body, an etheric sheath which surrounds and interpenetrates the physical body. Contained within the dragon body are the so called supernatural senses of clairvoyance. Clear audience, telepathy, omniscience, and omnipresence, which allow the dragons to remain in continual communication with the subtle realms which surround and interpenetrate the physical plane, which allow the dragons to remain in continual communication. You didn't need writing before Thoth hijacked you which allowed the dragons to remain in continual communication with the subtle realms, energy, octaves, which surround and interpenetrate the physical plane. If they so desire, they can extricate the dragon body from its physical sheath and travel within it to distant locations. Y'all gotta, uh, you know, see that movie, I Am Dragon. You know, literally, you know, just go see it. And, all right.
dragon body and you know you could look at it from different octaves if they so desire they can extricate the dragon body from its physical sheath and travel within it to distant locations throughout the universe at death the dragons of wisdom can permanently detach the dragon body from its material sheath and relocate within it to one of the many paradise realms of the immortals Do you think it's play play? You think it's a fairy tale? I hear you, I know you do. I just encourage you to let your water flow. Oh wow. wow. If they so desire, they can extricate the dragon body from its physical sheath and travel within it to distant locations without without throughout the universe man you can go places within you at death the serpent or dragon of wisdom can permanently detach the dragon body from its material sheath and relocate within it why to one of the many paradise realms within you what if you being The image of the creator means that within you is paradise. The kingdom is within. Can detach from the dragon body from its material, the illusion, and relocate to one of the many paradise realms of the immortals. That means you never die. That means you are the creator's creations, not the creation's creations. Ah. Try to tell y'all. Let's go. Let's go, man. Free Phoenix. Free Phoenix, man. I think it's play, play. There's some cold drop right here. Make sure you click on it. <laughs> There's some cold word right here. Make sure you click on it. Free Phoenix, man. So they got a Draco Rex in the Children's Museum, dude. Children's Museum. They have a Draco Rex. They call it a type of dinosaur. And here you have a special book our sister Larissa found for us. It has all the dragon drop. has over a thousand. I mean, it talks about, you know, so many species, different places, their nesting grounds, where they're located. All the drop is in here. The Acadian dragon is what we're talking about when we deal with Phoenix. They call it the green dragon. Draco, bright green markings, feathered frill plumage, All right, man. beautiful, American dragon, so he's called the last great American dragon, let's get it again, before leaving our expedition to see Acadian green dragons in the wild, Conciel and I made a stop to see the country's most famous dragon in captivity. You're in captivity, my naga. The dragons are in captivity. But this one is special. They're calling him Phineas, but that's not his name. They're calling him Phineas, but that's not his name. Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan. Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan is home to Phineas, a 140-year-old Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York for over a century. A 140 year old Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York for over a century. Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York for over a century, man. Love to Miss D in the Copper Color Awakening for this drop. In 1808 to 1809, the Iroquois hatched 32 dragons in New York alone. (laughs) 
Most famous dragon in captivity, Phineas, big homie, man. Phineas, what's up, man? Hold your head, man. Still in captivity, man. For you, for you people. Because you forgot your code. Because you forgot your law. Don't act like this is play play. You did this to Phineas, man. We did this to Phineas. Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan is home to Phineas. A 140-year-old Acadian Green Dragon that has lived in New York for over a century. Over a century. 1808, 1809, the Iroquois hatched 32 dragons in New York City. It's one of those dragons, Phineas, man. It seems to line up. It seems to line up. Substantiating re re research and resources from Drop Nation seem to add up. The Americans were breeding dragons at a frantic pace. The Chumash Native Americans of California were also known to have dragons capable of flying across the Rocky Mountains. Is it play play? 1808 to 1809. The Iroquois hatched 32 dragons in New York alone. A 140-year-old green dragon that has lived in New York for over a century, man. In 1857, P.T. Barnum acquired four Acadian green dragon hatchlings, which he placed in his American Museum in New York City. The Iroquois hatched 32 dragons in New York. In 1808 to 1809, he takes these hatchlings, so Phineas is a hatchling. The Most High is uncovering you for us the story of Phineas. And we're going to get him in different drops and watch how this pops up. Watch how Phineas is revealing, being revealed. P.T. Barnum in 1857 acquired four Acadian Green Dragon hatchlings, which he placed in his American Museum in New York. When the museum burned down, oh no shit. You put four dragons in the museum, somehow it burns down. <laughs> Freedom, nigga! Free Phineas! When the museum burnt down in 1865, two of the small dragons were killed. That's Phoenix's peoples. The remaining dragons were taken on tour with Barnum for over a decade on the P.T. Barnum Grand Traveling Museum in Menagerie. You look it up, my nugget, if you think this is play play. In 1888, Barnum donated one of the dragons to the, Lo to the London Zoo, but then it quickly got sick and died in 1889. Do you think it's play play? The last dragon was donated to the New York Zoo in 1891 upon Barnum's death and named Phineas in honor of his benefactor. His name ain't Phineas. His name ain't Phineas. Could it be Koba? Could Koba be... One of his names, but maybe we shouldn't speak his name. Maybe he hasn't spoken his name in a long time. Let's get it. Much a hot to Chef Candy for dropping this drop on Drop Nation. It's called The New World Dragon, Cobra's Code by Christopher A. Wilson. And let's get it. Of course, we got lots of pages missing. You know, I need like a real PDF. I just ordered the paperback. It's only 12 bucks on Amazon. So, all right, <laughs> you might do the same. Let's go. We're going belly flop. I don't know what page number. They got no page numbers on me. But when you pull it up, it's going to come right here. So, let's go. Or maybe a little bit after. But, you know, let's go. Let's go. I'm just going belly flop. It's that good. It's that good. Let's make our dismount on this. Enjoy the water, man, because it's about to be, you know. Woo. Just give me two minutes of this water. Maybe 45 seconds. Because I need it and you need it. Why are jamming in my water, man? Jam me up in a lot of ways, but never, ever jam up my water, man. I mean, that's just low. You know what I mean? To stop our flow, it's just plain old low. Dirt doggity dog. Let's go.
I'm gonna start my float. Free Phoenix. Free Phoenix. Free Phoenix. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. There we go. See, they on that play play, man. I want the real thing, man. I want the real thing. Sometimes you gotta work for it. Aha, man. La Hawa, praise Hawa. Hawa. We're about to get the dopest dismount we ever got. Some people think we're getting tired, but. <laughs> but that fire, that Dracon fire, um, we are. Uh, we're at a point we've never been before. We got more energy than we ever had before. We got more health than we ever had before. We look better than we ever looked before. Oh, why? Because our insides are feeling right on time. We got a vibration, so you should be feeling it. Tribing up and vibing up. It's deeper than all the shit you think, man. It's deeper than all the shit you think. You see the water flowing? Go with the flow. Flow with your water. Flow with the water the Creator has revealed. Oh, don't make the Creator work so hard to pull you down the stream. Flow with your water. Ah, wow. Free Phoenix. Hey man, y'all tune in to Hijack Slayer Radio, man. You know, and uh, just know that it's real dope to be surfing this wave with y'all, man, in real time, man. Let's get it. Let's make a dish now. Oh uh, man, love to Sister uh, Larissa, man, who dropped this link on us, man. With this Cheru, Cheruwe, Cheruwe. Chilean spirit of comets and asteroids, originally no more than a Rakanian meteorite. So again, we're connecting dragons and meteorites. So click that link below. Get that drop, man. Get that drop. Oh, this is fun when it feels so good. Much a hop to uh, Armani Gali, who dropped this drop. He said, Aki, Aki, Aki. I keep people are a Maya people in Guatemala, the Aki, the Brotherhood. Really? Aki people in Guatemala? Aki, Aki. Cliche root. Maya, Maya, cliche. Guatemala, Guatemala. I mean, I'm, I know I ain't tripping, for I've been seeing a Guatemala all over the place when I read the Papu Vuh. Key Shane names. 
she who has borne children from the perfect aspect of the root verb all to bear children the name male god kajulam specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring thus he who has begotten sons sprouting seed kingdom is within Fray Bartolome de las Casas wrote in the 16th century that the people of who? Guatemala worship as their main power, their main squeeze, the great father and the great mother that were in heaven, apparently referring to this divine couple that are one. They are one like you and your wife, you are one. Guatemala. <laughs> I'm just talking the I am or the individual self as fully united with the unlimited spiritual self or Hawa in the affirmation of I am that. I am everything. I and my father are one. Guatemala. Guatemala. Yeah, where's that job? Where's the job? Oh, not yet. Not yet. She's just getting the Guatemala. Yeah. Oh yeah, dig on this, man. This is called Devil's Gate in Pasadena, California. Devil's Gate Dam, right? Just right quick. Paranoia enthusiasts websites, and you'll find a few common threads with Alistair Crowley, L. Ron Hubbard's Jack Parsons project, as well as mentions of the Native American lore, moon child rituals, and the seven gates of hell. Well, they're calling it hell. Could it be a, another type of seven gates? Remember your seven cities? Could your seven cities have seven gates? Remember, you're in Tartary, right? Tartary means hell. In the 1828 Webster Dictionary, Tartary means hell. So you're in Tartary to them. But we're just talking the seven gates. And there's a seventh gate in Pasadena. Much a hi to my bro Albert Thompson, man, who been been dropping his Alta Alta drop, and there's an Altadena, Pasadena in California. All right, we're just talking Cloud Force, man. Cloud Force, Kitsu Dragon, the Kitsu Dragon, Free Phoenix, Free Phoenix, man. And I'm just talking your what? They dwell with immutable physical bodies which can survive for hundreds of years although they experience the world primarily out of the immortal fourth dimension dragon body, my naga. An etheric sheath which surrounds and interpenetrates the physical body, my naga. Contained within your dragon body, my naga, are supernatural senses, my naga. Of clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, omniscience, omniscience, and omnipresence. Look it all up, because it's in you, which allows you, Dragon Naga Drakan, to remain in continual communication with the subtle realms. Remember when they eat your dragon and press a John and the Gypsies, they get subtle uh, knowledge, they get intelligence. Of a settledness, it's a settled realm. When they say settled, they're talking high order, high order. It's very shh, which surrounds and interpenetrate the physical plane. If they so desire, they can desire they can extricate the dragon body from its physical and travel into distant locations, man. When they die, they do what at death? The serpents, the dragons can permanently detach the dragon body from its material and relocate within one of its many paradise realms of the immortals fountain of youth man guatemala oh wow oh, wow let's go let's go i'm ready now let's get it bigger the new dragon cold was cold Wow, wow, I love the chef candy, man. My beautiful wife. Let's go. The room was dusty. The smell was industrial plastic and cardboard boxes was difficult to ignore. Not unpleasant, but certainly pungent. There were 
Small windows. There was a small window high in the wall. Wow. Connor peered out of the opening. He could see the sheriff's station directly across the street. And in front of the building, he spied Noah. He was on the phone. Connor sighed as he covered the opening with an old sheet. He knew nothing was coming. He knew what was coming. It's up. It's up, Jenny called out. There is where I left off, where you were at the house. I was going to tell you Carvel found something unbelievable. And this is the code. This is the code. This is the code Carvel was talking about. Connor, it's a warning. Alright, so we're talking about a code. Something being decoded, man. <laughs> I'm going to start right here. This work must have taken Carvel years to complete, Jenny remarked. And with the stress he faced, it's a miracle he completed at all. As they read the first translated code, a story unfolded, one they did not expect. All right, listen up for some drop. They now call me, so they're reading the code, all right? And remember, Phineas, he was named Phineas. The last dragon, the last American dragon, was donated to the New York Zoo in 1891 upon Barnum's death and named Phineas in honor of his benefactor. So whoever bought him was named Phineas, not him. Whoever bought him was named Phineas. A beautiful Victorian dragon house was built for Phineas and he quickly became the central attraction. By the 1960s, my naga, Phineas... 1960s, I'm talking Martin Luther King, civil rights. However, the New York Zoo, the Dragon House, and Phineas, who had lived in a small, cramped concrete pit for 70 years, were all in bad repair. And I believe that this story about to read is taking place during this time with Phineas, where he's in bad repair. In 1972, the newly formed World Dragon Fund used Phineas. So we got the Frank Templeton Dragon Fund, Frank Templeton Investments, Templeton Dragon Fund, now currently traded on the New York Stock Exchange as TDF, used Phineas as their poster dragon to raise funds for the protection of dragons. Now they was raising funds to keep Phineas lo locked up, just like they raised funds to keep you locked up. In 1978, a new dragon enclosure was built for Phineas. So in 1978, my naga. A new dragon enclosure was built for the homie Phoenix, and his health and attendance at the park dramatically improved. He's still alive, my naga. Today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. Today, my naga, Phineas, they're calling him Phineas after that folk that bought him, but let's get to the drop of his name. Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity, just like you in America. They call me Koba. They're reading from the code, translated code. They now call me Koba. Pai Atai. Pai Atai. Pai Atai. Which means sky being in the language of these people. Whoa. So Phineas is saying, they now call me Koba Payatai, which means sky being in the language of these people. My real name. My real name has never been spoken before, and I will not utter it now. Wow. So his name ain't Phineas. They call him Koba, which means sky being. In the language of these people, but my real name has never been spoken before, and I will not utter it now. I am the last of my kind. Phineas, today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. My real name has never been spoken before, and I will not utter it now. I am the last of my kind. I am a dragon from the line of 
Dobes Dragons, the flyers of the Barrenos Mountains in the high country of Palai. And in this is both a glorious beginning but also a painful inevitable end because sadly I am dying. Phineas who had been living in a small cramped concrete pit for over 70 years were all in bad repair. Then they built a new enclosure and his health increased. So is this, could this be Phineas before his health increased? You know what I'm saying? Or another great dragon, which is even better. We got another great dragon. But this dragon right here, who they called Koba, but his name has never been spoken before. I am a dragon, all right? The flyer of the Barrenos Mountains. So I looked up Barrenos Mountains, couldn't get nothing. But you know what I got? Let's back it up. Let go. So when I put in Borenos Mountains, what comes up? Barbados. Remember, uh, you know what I'm saying? As my man uh, Horace Butler said, it's you know this two-letter rule. Sometimes they'll switch two letters, one or two letters. So if you switch up, you you take the B out, all right, and you put the N instead of a D. All right, Barbados, Barreno, it's very possible. I don't know, but very possible, all right? So I couldn't get no hit on Barreno's, but then here we go for Barbados, which makes a lot of sense, if you know what I mean. The Barbados Mountains. The Barbados Mountains. Let's go. Let's go, Barbados. The Flyers of the Barreno's or Barbados Mountains. So before it was called Barbados, was it called Barrenos? I don't know. In the high country of Pilai. And this is the and this is both a glorious beginning but also a painful inevitable end. Because sadly I am dying to be clear. I am not just any dragon. I am the last of my kind. I have been transformed. I am now a symbol of truth, a vessel of origin and earth history. I am a conduit to the past and to the future. I was sent into exile nearly 6,000 years ago to live in the unnamed lands until my death. The emperor dragons in the council of drakes foresaw the rise of the power of the a powerful group of humans called the black robes. You go to court today. Who's wearing black robes? Let's go. And in order to protect the sanctity and future of the earth's creatures, they instructed me to perform Saram Mortin. Saram Mortin. In my bones and in my very essence, I am now preserving this story. And just quickly, Saram Mortin. When you look that up, you have it right here Saram Mortin, not confessing nor accused, therefore unpunished during life. So it's not any sin. In this Phineas or Koba, you know what I'm saying? There's no sin. He, there's nothing to confess. So everything's being preserved in his bones, man. Can you dig it? They instructed me to perform Saram Mortim in my bones and in my very essence. I am now preserving wow. the story. Wow. It is an entire chronicle of the earth and the rise of humans and also the extinction of the dragons. Dragons, Connor Scope? Shh, let me read Jenny shot back. In this I will ex explicate the rise of war and the lust for power and ensuing corruption that emerged in human beings and the unnatural cultural construct of humankind. This is a chronicle of the past events, a reckoning of human history, a why, but also a warning of the coming changes to earth. What is this, Connor asked? What the hell is this about dragons and shit? <laughs> I was going to tell you, Jenny said. Carvel unearthed a dragon, at least part of one, in an archaeological site. He documented everything. Remember what I told you about the codes, the, the genetic work that Carvel was doing, the DNA codes that he was discovered, that he discovered. This is the translation. It's mathematical, but he translated it into English. So you're getting the English, but it is a mathematical code. Just continue reading, Connor said nervously as he checks the hallway. Jenny continued reading out.